Hi, I'm Deb Levy Friedler from the Auckland Hebrew Congregation and today's Practical Judaism is looking at kashering and the different methods that we can use for cleaning and kashering to get ready for Pesach. The Torah commands us that we mustn't eat chametz or have chametz in our possession during Pesach and part of that is getting rid of the vessels or cleaning and preparing the vessels that have been used for chametz throughout the year. Um, the seven methods that we're going to look at are seven different ways that you can get your kitchen and your home ready for Pesach and make sure that it's free of chametz. So the cashering required for any particular item usually depends on how that utensil came in contact with the chametz in the first place. So the general rule is that the cleaning or the cashering needs to match the manner in which the item became contaminated. And so we're going to have a chance to go through that today and look at when we need to use a more um, extreme method of cleaning in order to get rid of the chametz that may have come in contact with the utensil, the vessel or the appliance that we're trying to clean. So the first method is just simple cleaning. Um, and this just requires removing any chametz and then cleaning with the aid of an effective detergent or cleaner. And that'll be appropriate for things like pantry shelves where there's been no hot contact with chametz or refrigerator shelves. For those, we just need to clear out the chametz and give them a good clean and then they're ready for Pesach. The second method is covering. Again, this is a much more simple method than some of the others that we're going to talk about today. But some of surfaces, even if they've been used with hot chametz, um, will only require being well cleaned and covered. So um, uh, when we say covered, a use of a thick plastic cover is appropriate. Um, some people cover in double layers of tin foil. But either way, we're creating a barrier between the kosher le Pesach food that we're going to have and the surface that has been contaminated with chametz at some point. And so by doing this, we're creating an environment where we can keep kosher le Pesach. Um, and this might be appropriate for a tabletop or for a kitchen bench that's made of something like formica, where we just want to create a barrier. The third method that I want to talk about today is soaking and this one's really important um, to start early because it's actually a 72 hour process so you really need to think about getting in early with this kind of cushioning because it's going to take you a few days to go through the whole cycle and you want to have everything ready for not just Pesach but for searching for the chametz the night before Pesach which we've discussed in our previous video. So um, some utensils, particularly um, glass, um, would be a useful example, can be cashed in this way. And with items like glasses, what you do is you put them immersed in water for 24 hours, then you change the water and do the process for another 24 hours, and then you change the water again and then you drain. So effectively, it's not soaking for, 20, uh, for 72 hours, it's soaking for 24 hour periods, three times one after the other. On a very practical level, the easiest place to do this is the bathtub. Sterilize and clean the bathtub so it's suitable for having food utensils in it. And then um, put them in, fill up the bathtub, after 24 hours, pull out the plug, repeat the process over the 72 hour period, and you've got kosher le Pesach glasses that you can use. The fourth method I wanted to talk about is um, scalding with boiling water. And some utensils that have come in contact with chametz via hot liquids um, will need to be cashed by immersing in boiling water. Remember we talked about the method that the, the contamination happened being connected to the method in which we then use to cleanse the, the utensil. So the item that needs to be cashed needs to be thoroughly cleaned. Let's say we're talking about a cutlery set. So if it's a plain metal cutlery set, no like wooden attachments or weird um, handles, plain cutlery set, you clean it very thoroughly, then you make sure that it's not used for 24 hours with chametz, and then you bring water to boil in a large pot. It's ideal to have a pot that is just dedicated for this kind of kashering. Um, if you don't have a pot like that, we're going to talk about how you can make pots kosher as well. But let's, for this argument's sake, say you've got a pot that's ready. You put water into the pot, you bring it to the boil, and you keep it boiling. 
And then what you wanna do is drop each item individually into the pot so that each item is individually surrounded by the boiling water. Um, one of the practical ways to do this can be with tongs. Just make sure that your tongs are kosher for Pesach. So you might need to kosher the tongs first before you start using them to drop items into your pot. Um, part of this process is making sure that the water doesn't stop boiling. So you might want to do it slowly because the cold temperature of the, the uh, cutlery can bring down the temperature of your boiling water and afterwards um, then you you if the water stops boiling sorry during the process just wait for it to resume boiling and keep going and once the items have been removed from the boiling water they should be immersed immediately in cold water as well and this would be good for metal um, definitely any metal utensils and then there are disagreements between different halakhic authorities on what other items that might be suitable for so um, have a look at, at the Auckland Hebrew Congregation Pesach guide to check which items that would be suitable for. For method number five, um, scalding with hot water for surfaces um, some utensils can't be immersed in water. For example, if you've got a metal kitchen sink, you can't immerse it in boiling water. So what you do, the item needs to be thoroughly cleaned again from all surface dirt. Then it should be not used with um, heat for 24 hours prior to the cashering. And then um, you put boiling water, preferably poured directly from a kettle or like a, another utensil like a pot to cover the entire surface that is being cashed and the boiling water must come in contact with the hot metal um, and to ensure that the temperature remains as high as possible. Um, for some authorities they actually require you to heat up stones or metal pieces like bolts or nuts and have this on the surface as well so that when you pour on the hot water it stays boiling, it doesn't cool down too much. Um, so you might need to pour repeated hot water over the surface so that you raise the temperature of, for example, your metal sink, and then you're still pouring on boiling water so that it's really being boiled as opposed to um, when the boiling water hits the temperature dropping and it not being boiled. And again, afterwards, the item should then be washed down with cold water. Two more methods to go. Um, the last one is a light heating method. Um, where you use a flame, um, often the most useful utensil for this is actually a blowtorch. So a blowtorch flame um, and you need to require the temperature to be at about 72 degrees Celsius. Um, the idea is that if you put straw or paper or something dry onto the surface it would begin to smolder. So that's quite a high heat but it's not as high as the next method. Um, which is when you actually need it to reach a red glow. So this method um, it can be a substitute for the scalding as well. You could just blow torch um, your items instead of putting them with boiling water. And it would include things like the interior walls of an oven or a stove, um, though there are other ways to cash your oven and your stove that we can talk about as well. Um, and the glowing method where you'd actually need to heat something to the point where it glows would be important for things like barbecue grates um, where you really need to get it up to a temperature where it's totally glowing. In terms of general cleaning for the rest of the house, you don't require these kinds of extreme methods um, where there hasn't been food preparation and where there probably won't be food preparation, for example, the bedrooms. Um, there you're just doing general cleans with general household cleaners and trying to get rid of as much hummets as possible. And so those are the seven basic ways that you can get your kitchen ready for Pesach.